Hello everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm sharing my most anticipated November book releases. There are some fabulous books coming out this month and I thought it would be fun to share my list with you. So these are all books I would love to get, though I can't imagine getting all of them this month, but they're definitely on my wish list to perhaps get at some point over the next several months, though some of them I've been very lucky and have been sent already, hence the stack here, and I can't wait to share my choices with you. Now these choices are very personal to me, they're not necessarily the big name releases for this month, but they're books that I am really looking forward to, that I think I would enjoy and hope you would enjoy as well. So let's get started with my list. First up, this book was already published, it's A Poem for Every Winter Day, and it's a beautiful poetry anthology. I think it's designed for children, but to be honest, it's the most beautiful anthology for adults as well. I bought a poem for every autumn day back in September, and I've been loving reading that every day, sort of at bedtime I like to read a poem or two. And I've been loving the autumn anthology, and this winter anthology looks charming too. I already have the big anthologies, or a nature poem for every day of the year, and a nature poem for every night of the year. And I think that these seasonal ones are taken from those anthologies. However, I still love to get these because they're a lot lighter than the great big <laughs> fat anthologies, so they're easy to have by your bedside. And I like that they're all collected by season. So autumn is out already, winter was sent to me kindly by Pan Macmillan, and it was out on the 1st of November. And then spring and summer will be coming out next year. So I was so thrilled to get this, it starts on December 1st, so I'll be putting it by my bedside at the start of December. And then this book was published on the 3rd of November. It's a collection of David Sedaris's best stories, so it's called The Best of Me. And this looks like a great read, especially if you're a fan of his writing. And I think that this looks like a super collection, supposedly, of all of his best work that he's selected himself. And it looks like a great book, maybe again to keep by your bedside and to dip into over the next few months for some welcome entertainment at this time. So I was really fortunate to be sent this by the publisher as well, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Then this book is being published on the 5th of November. It's The Stubborn Light of Things, A Nature Diary by Melissa Harrison. I was really looking forward to the publication of this book, and I was so thrilled to get this copy from Faber, who kindly sent it to me. I have to show you the cover without the flap around it too, without the title flap, because it is so beautiful. I'll show you the back as well. Isn't that just stunning? I absolutely love it. I'm a big fan of Melissa Harris's writing. She writes a nature column every month for The Times as part of their Saturday Nature Notes column. She's also written fiction and she's written some wonderful season anthologies that I love to pull out at, in the correct season. And she really is a brilliant observer of the natural world, both in the city and in the countryside, because she spent many years in London before moving to Suffolk. So I really empathise with that because I recently moved from London to Yorkshire, and although I really sought out as much of the countryside as I could in London, I did find it, frankly, more of a challenge. And it's such a delight being in Yorkshire and experiencing and experiencing the beautiful countryside around me. So this book is a collection of Melissa Harrison's columns for The Times. I think that 
Many of the articles she wrote for the Times were obviously condensed and edited a bit for the newspaper to fit into the column, but these are the original extended versions of her columns, which is wonderful. And the book is divided between city, so Melissa's time in London, and then country when she moved to Suffolk. And I'm really enjoying dipping into it already. If you know Melissa Harrison's podcast, which is also called The Stubborn Light of Things, and that to me was a real tonic to listen to that earlier in the year. And I'm really looking forward to turning to this book now, especially with a second UK lockdown happening. And I think that this is a lovely companion to the podcast because on the podcast, um, Melissa shared some of her columns and she went out for walks in the countryside and sort of recur recorded bird song and spoke about what she was seeing as well as having guests on and things like that. So this book looks to be a real tonic as well and I'm enjoying it already. I think this is also being relief released on the 5th of November. Um, this is a proof copy which was sent to me by Faber and it's The Dead of Winter by Nicola Upson. It's the next in her Josephine Tay mystery series, so Nicola Upson is writing a series about the real life mystery writer Josephine Tay, but she's making her a detective herself in this series of books, which I think is such a fun idea and I love the sound of this one, I can't wait to read it, it sounds wonderful wonderful Christmassy read. It's set over Christmas in 1938 and it's set in Cornwall, specifically St Michael's Mount, as you can tell from the cover if you're familiar um, with the area. I've been to Cornwall, I've been to St Michael's Mount and crossed over the causeway and explored all over. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. I mean, it's such a beautiful place. Admittedly, I went in the spring, not in the dead of winter, which I think would be pretty grim, but it sounds like the perfect location for a mystery. So I'm really looking forward to this. And I love anything in the style of golden age mysteries. Also out on the 5th of November is the paperback version of Nudibranch by Arenison Okoji. This is such an original and interesting collection of short stories. I actually read the hardback of these stories last year's and I interviewed Arenison on my podcast. We had such a brilliant chat, I think she's really a master of the short story. And it was so fun speaking to her about her craft. These are really surreal stories. There's almost a dreamlike or really sort of nightmare quality to the stories. They're very strange. They're a bit like looking at a surrealist painting. But there are themes that crop up um, that are common to all of the stories. Like language is a very important theme. Women's freedom is another one, as well as madness and violence as well comes up a lot in her stories, especially female violence, which is much rarer, I think, to read about and very interesting. So this is really an extraordinary collection and unsurprisingly, Irenison has won a prize for this short story collection, specifically the story Grace Jones within it, which was one of my favourites actually from this book. So that was brilliant. And Dialogue Books kindly sent me the new paperback in advance of its release and I definitely recommend looking out for it. Then I was delighted to be sent this book by the publisher as well, which is 50 Words for Snow by Nancy Campbell. This is also released on the 5th of November. It's funny how publications all seem to group together around specific days. In November, the 5th seems a really big day and the 12th, as you'll see later on. But yeah, so this one is also due out on the 5th of November. I love the cover. I mean, how stunning is that I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, Nancy Campbell is such an interesting writer. I think her previous book was called something like The Library of Ice. 
and in this book she's looking at all different cultures and languages around the world and she's really analysing the different ways that we look at snow, why snow is so important and mythology and folklore and storytelling generally all around the world. She's examining all the different words and their meanings for snow from many different languages and cultures. I have a background in linguistics, I did linguistics as my undergraduate study, so I love anything that sort of delves into linguistics at all and this sounds really interesting to me, I can't wait to read it and of course it makes the perfect winter reading material too, so I'm really looking forward to this. Then the publisher kindly sent me this book as well. It's Kant's Little Prussian Head and Other Reasons Why I Write, an autobiography through essays. And it's by Claire Massoud. I hope that's how you say her last name. But this looks fascinating. Again, it's due to be released on the 5th of November. I love books about books and writing generally. And in this collection of essays, Claire Massoud is looking at her life through the lens of the literature that she's read. So she's writing about books, she's writing about art and culture, I think, more generally as well. And it looks like a very literary and fascinating study and I can't wait to read it. I, I know that I always generally enjoy this type of book, so I'm really looking forward to it. Apparently there's an essay in here where Claire Massoud talks a lot about um, Never Let Me Go, which is one of my favourite books and I'm really looking forward to reading that. But yes, can't wait to get to that one. And then this is also out on the 5th of November, it's The Silent Stars Go By by Sally Nichols. I really enjoyed Sally Nichols's YA novel, um, Things a Bright Girl Can Do, I think that's what it was called. And this is her newest YA book and it's the perfect reading for this winter. It's set in North Yorkshire just after World War One, so obviously I'm already drawn in by the setting, being in North Yorkshire myself, and it's set in December, and it follows the story of Margot, who whose boyfriend went missing in action during the First World War, but just before he left, she, as a very young 16-year-old, spent a romantic night with him and fell pregnant. Now, her father is the local vicar, so her pregnancy would have been incredibly shocking, especially at that time, and what the family chose to do was to disguise the pregnancy. So, in fact, um, Margot's mother disguises the baby as her own and Margot has to live with this decision which she finds very painful. She goes off to the city to study to become a secretary and when she returns home for the Christmas holidays it pains her all over again to see her own son not calling her mother thinking that she's just a sister. But then her former fiancé returns from the war, I think he's been kept a sort of prisoner of war, but in fact he's safe and well. Margot thought perhaps he'd died and he comes back home and wants to meet her and she has to decide whether to tell him what happened and that they have a child together or not. And I've started reading it already, I think I'm probably going to finish it later today and I'm really loving it. It's such a charming story for right now. I love all the Christmas scenes that are running through it too and it's a lovely slim book so very easy to read. 
Then this is also out on the 5th of November. It's Scoff, A History of Food and Class in Britain by Penn Vogra. I love Penn Vogra. She's written some fantastic books like Dinner with Dickens and Dinner with Mr. Darcy. I've interviewed her on my podcast before about Dinner with Dickens. She's such a lovely person and she knows so much about food and food history that when I heard about this new book, I was so excited. I was absolutely thrilled to get sent a copy by Penn's publisher. And this sounds fascinating. I have to show you the beautiful M papers too. I think they're gorgeous. And in this, she's really looking at the hi history of Britain, the social history of Britain through food and class. And of course, food is so much tied up with class. Um, much more than you realise, I think, in many ways. And I can't wait to read all of this. It looks wonderful. She's got chapters headed things like Christmas pudding, charity and family, where we sit and why we care, macaroni and other oldie English pastas, stews, a hodgepodge of names, French food, male chefs and female cooks, High tea, a bourgeois affair, tea, a now universal magic, etiquette, the civilising or discriminating process. I think there's just, oh, and the avocado, the middle class signifier. <laughs> yes, avo, avo toast, that is so true. But I think this looks absolutely fascinating and I can't wait to read it. I think it will give a lot of really interesting insights into social history, both past and present, and I can't wait to read it. And then, finally, this book is coming out on the 12th of November. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about the avalanche of books. <laughs> I was carefully putting them on a chair, and they decided to all fall down, or almost all. But hope, thankfully they're okay. This always seems to happen in my videos. <laughs> but anyway, this book is out on the 12th of November. It's called Patchwork, A Life Amongst Clothes by Claire Wilcox. I've been sent the proof copy by Bloomsbury Publishing. And this sounds like a really fascinating memoir. Claire Wilcox um, has been the curator of fashion at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London for most of her working life. And this is her memoir examining her own life through clothing. And it really does sound like such a fascinating read. It's almost told in little snippets or vignettes of her life. So some are just very short, very short little essays. Some are longer chapters. And it looks really interesting. And I can't wait to read more about Claire's career at the museum, which she of course goes into a bit as well. But I think she also shares a lot more personal stories about her life, looking at the clothes that she wore and the clothes that mattered to her. And I think that's a really interesting premise. The inside flap shows the cover or what the cover will look like in the finished book and I think that looks lovely. So yes, i am been diving into this one a little bit and so far enjoying it. So the rest of the books that I want to tell you about in November, I don't have already. <laughs> Some of them are coming out quite a bit later in the month, but I wanted to tell you about them anyway. So I've got my iPad here with my little list. So first of all, there's this gorgeous new Penguin English Library cloth-bound edition of Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. I love collecting some of my favourite books in the Penguin English cloth-bound series. I love the pink cover on this one. I do like pink, I have to admit. And this is definitely one that I'm going to want to get to add to my Penguin hardback library. Next up, this book sounds brilliant. A lot of the books I'm looking forward to this month, I have to confess, are mysteries and historical fiction. There's a real theme and a lot of mysteries coming up this month, but I think they're a perfect cosy read for sort of Christmas, aren't they? 
and this one is called Christmas's Murder by Val McDermott and it's a festive collection of chilling tales. It says from an irresponsible baron whose body is discovered beneath a silver birch tree to an author who is haunted by the spiteful presence of a jealous writing partner. The characters McDermott conjures are enigmatic and dangerous, never above suspicion. I love a good short story mystery collection to read in the run up to Christmas and this one certainly looks perfect to me. I love the Angela Harding cover too, she's such a brilliant illustrator and this, and this cover just looks gorgeous so definitely want to get this one and it's out on the 5th of November. And then the next book that I'm excited about is, that, is The Diabolical Bones by Bella Ellis and this is out on the 5th of November. The Diabolical Bones is the second in a series of mysteries that Bella, that Bella Ellis is writing about the Bronte sisters, Charlotte, Emily and Anne. And in these books she's casting the sisters in the role of detectives, which I think is a really fun idea and I've been looking forward to the second in the series. This is set um, at Christmas time, so another appropriate read for the upcoming weeks. It says it's Christmas 1845 and Hoeth is in the grip of a freezing winter. Charlotte, Emily and Anne Bronte are rather losing interest in detecting until they hear of a shocking discovery. The bones of a child have been found interned within the walls of a local house. Topwithens Hall, home to the scandalous and brutish Bradshaw family. That sounds like a good read to me, so I'm looking forward to that one. Again, out on the 5th of November is another mystery, The Mitford Trial by Jessica Fellows. This is the latest book in the series about Nancy Mitford and her maid and these are obviously fictionalized stories where Jessica Fellows is using a real life character from history, Nancy Mitford who's one of my favorite writers and she has her solving crimes with her trusted maid and I think that it's a really fun idea and what I find really interesting about Jessica Fellows is books in this series is that she bases a lot of the mysteries on real crimes, so real sort of unsolved cases and this story I believe is also based on a real life crime. So I think it's very ingenious how she does that and comes up with her own solution to the crime and fits it in with her characters. I think that she's very clever. I'm looking forward to that. Then also out on the 5th of November is another great winter mystery and that's Death Goes on Skis by Nancy Spain. This is being republished by Virago and in fact they're bringing out more of Nancy Spain's books I think next year and these sound really fun to me. Um, it's meant to be, I'm not sure how great the mystery really is in this book because when I've been reading reviews of it, it just sounds like it's meant to be more sort of fun and like cosy reading, entertaining reading than maybe an amazing mystery. But it, it's set in a ski resort and it just sounds like a good winter cosy read to my mind. And I think it's in a sort of golden age style a bit so I'm looking forward to it I think it sounds like a fun one and then another mystery that's out on the 5th of November is The Searcher by Tana French I haven't actually read any Tana French novels I don't think but my mum has and she really enjoys them so I do want to give them a go at some time uh, this one is about a police inspector from Chicago who I think retires to a remote village in Ireland and there he just wants to lead a quiet life, go to the village pub, that sort of thing. But of course trouble comes knocking at his door. So it sounds like another gripping read as well. So I might give this one a try or maybe get it for my mum as I know that she would probably enjoy it. And then this is also out on 5th of November and that's Time for Tea by Shirley Hughes. And it's a first book of cookery for small children and I think it looks like it would be 
absolutely charming. I mean, even just for myself. I love Shirley Hughes. I love her illustrations. And this looks really sweet. It's got lots of appropriate recipes for young people. So I think the idea is that it's meant to be a sort of first cookbook for children. And you, they, there are recipes like pancakes to make with dad or roasting apples for after going to the Saturday shops, making mum a birthday cake, like things like that. Simple things, but recipes that children can relate to in some way with what they eat in their everyday life. And I think it sounds like a really sweet book. Okay, and then moving along in the month a little bit, this is out on the 10th of November, and it's We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. Shirley Jackson, but it's a lovely new Penguin Vitae edition, and I think that it looks stunning. I mean, you know already how much I love this book if you've been watching my YouTube videos at all. I seem to have mentioned this book so many times, but I read it at the start of the summer and it absolutely blew my mind. I thought it was amazing, and I'd love to get a hardback edition of it that looks this gorgeous. I think that would be wonderful so I am strongly tempted to get this at some point anyway and then out on the 12th of November is Things I Learnt on the 628 A Guide to Daily Reading by Stig Abel and as I've already said I love books about books and the joys of reading and that's why this book has sort of caught my eye it's about Stig Abel spending a whole year reading every day of his commute and then he wrote about the books that he read and how reading so much changed his life as well as presumably changed the enjoyment of his commute and I think that's a really interesting premise and I love books about books as I've already said so I think this one looks really interesting to me. And then also out on the 12th of November is The Thief on the Wing Tours by Kate Mascarenhas. I'm not sure how you say her name, her last name, so sorry about that. But this looks like a really intriguing book. It's about a family called the Kendrick family who for centuries I think have been making these dolls and somehow they managed to imbue this magical quality to the dolls that they make so some emotion gets put into each doll so a doll can make you feel wonderfully euphorically happy or despairing and for some reason the gift of making these dolls has only been given um, now to the male members of the family but young Persephone Kendrick wants to learn the secret to making these dolls and I think it just sounds like a really interesting book sort of full of mystery and a bit of magic and it sounds like the sort of story I'd like to curl up with through the winter evenings so I'm quite intrigued by this one and then also out on the 12th of the uh, on the on the 12th of November is The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. She of course wrote the best selling The Binding and this is her new story which sounds really intriguing. It's about some kind of magical school I think. Um that's tucked away in the mountains and every year there's some kind of big magical event or test or something and when two pupils return to the school interesting things start happening it all starts to unravel a bit I think and it just sounds very intriguing I definitely would like to get this one and see what the story is really about but it's really sparked my interest so I love the cover too it's gorgeous so I'm looking forward to this one and then next, also out on the 12th of November, and another good wintry mystery is One by One by Ruth Ware. And this is about a group of colleagues who gather together for a sort of corporate resort at a ski chalet, I think, in the mountains. And an avalanche happens and they all get trapped together. 
and one of their number goes missing and it looks like maybe they've been murdered and this definitely sends some tingles down my spine and reminds me a little bit of the premise of and then there were none by agatha christie which is such a brilliant agatha christie so i'm quite intrigued by this one it sounds like it could be quite a gripping read so it's definitely on my list and then also out on the 12th of November is Black Narcissus by Ruma Godden. Virago are republishing this classic Ruma Godden book in a really beautiful new edition. I think the cover looks stunning. This book is set in the Himalayas. It's about a former palace that's been turned into a convent. And the nuns who come feel like they're very close to heaven up high in these mountains and they enjoy making plans but then things all start to go wrong in the convent and I can't wait to read this and I really want to get this new beautiful edition by Virago so I'm definitely excited about this one. The next Osfau on the 12th of November is Bodies from the Library number two, edited by Tony Medawar. I was just aware of this when I saw that this volume two was coming out, but there is also a volume one, and I'm tempted to get that too, or I might put it on my Christmas wish list, because I think both of these books sound like the sort of thing I'd love to dip into on Christmas Day. Apparently, in both of them, they've collected hitherto unpublished unpublished short stories of the golden age. It says lost tales of mystery and suspense from the golden age of detection and they include newly discovered stories by writers like Dorothy L. Sayers and Edmund Crispin. So these definitely sound like my cup of tea being such a fan of golden age mysteries and I mean Dorothy L. Sayers is one of my favourite writers so I'd love to read some new short uh, mystery stories by her. So yeah, this one I think will definitely go on my Christmas wish list. Then moving along, along a bit, out, out November 17th is A Promised Land by Barack Obama. I think this book is on so many people's uh, wish list for the month. It's already a bestseller, obviously, and so many people will be anticipating this book this month. I spoke to my dad on Zoom the other day and he was telling me about how he put in this massive order of books to the Strand Bookshop in New York. So my dad lives in New York because the Strand is struggling a bit and he put in a big order of books with them and A Promised Land was on his list and I think it, it will be on so many people's lists. So this is a really exciting release for November. And then also out on the 17th of November is People Who Love to Eat Are Always the Best People by Julia Child. And this is a sort of compilation of some of Julia Child's best quotes about food. And it sounds so much fun. I mean, I think I <laughs> agree with her that people who love to eat are always the best people. But she was so full of amazing joie de vivre. I just love Julia Child, I love her philosophy on life and this looks like a really fun little book and I think it would be a lovely present to give to anyone who loves food or cooking or just loves Julia. I think that this looks like a really sweet little book. And then finally, out on the 24th of November is Dark Tides by Philippa Gregory. And this is the follow-up novel from her book Tidelands that I think was published last year. And that's shot straight to the top of my to-be-read list because I'd really like to read Tidelands to see how much I like it before ordering Dark Tides. I'm really hoping I'll like Tidelands because it sounds great. It's all about the witch mania of the 1600s and a girl who is very good with herbs and healing becomes accused of being a witch. And then this book follows on um, telling the story of the family from Tidelands. And I think it spans um, London, Venice, and New England. It's also set in the 1600s. And it looks really good. So I'm excited for this one. 
But anyway, those are all of the books that are coming out in November that I think sound really interesting. Let me know if any of these appeal to you or if any of them were already on your wish list or if I'm missing any November books that you think I definitely shouldn't miss that are due to be released. I'd love to know. But thanks so much for watching, do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel which you can do by clicking on my face that pops up over here. But I'll be back again very soon with, an, with another video and I wish you all a happy November, take care and stay safe, goodbye.